I don't think there's anything that's certain in the world at the moment. There's a lot that can change, there's a lot that can happen. And I think that is in the back of your mind every time I'm going into work. Adult trauma, ETA five minutes. Got an assault coming in. He's stabbed multiple times. Five-year-old hit by a car, dragged for three metres, degloved the right side of their scalp. Code red. They're now saying partial amputation. A traumatic cardiac arrest. This is just disastrous. Travelled by cow. Why does that make that up? Oh, it's a proper day today, isn't it? St George's, London, one of Britain's busiest a &E departments, under more pressure than ever. What are you doing? It does sometimes feel like a battlefield and it feels like a losing battle at times as well. Oh, you need to calm yourself down. I have ten traumas and absolutely no space. 25-year-old jump from a third floor balcony. This is the point where we can make a difference. Thank you, everybody. Place where life. The best place to make friends. <laughs> A and E. Love and loss. The scariest thing in my life. I thought I lost it. Unfold every single day. A life is not just a singular thing. Things that happen to you have a huge effect on the people around you as well. You scare me so much. You know that. Yeah. All the patients you're about to see were treated in just one 24-hour period. I see behaviour every day that reaffirms my belief in the inherent goodness of people. It's all a bit of a shock, isn't it? <laughs> and I think I'm incredibly fortunate to work in that environment. It's a lot to take in. It's the love of my life. Rich, he just loves that adrenaline. I bought him a skydive for Christmas one year. Being on a motorbike is just taking it to the next level. He loved it, that was his passion. I just would never stop him doing that because it's just who he is. after an accident involving a car and a motorbike. Emergency services are on the scene. St George's, any I may help? Is it a trauma? Yeah. Yeah. It's motorcyclist versus back of van, okay? A 35-year-old motorcyclist is being rushed to St George's by air ambulance, following a high-speed collision with another vehicle on the M25. Mail trauma call ETA 12 minutes. Mail trauma call ETA 12 minutes. Thank you. So it's 36-year-old male, motorcycle versus van. He's got thoracic injuries and rift fractures. If you're on a motorbike, you're unprotected. And if you can imagine, all that force is going straight into the human being. I have adult trauma for recently, yeah. You may have a head injury, lung injuries, spinal injuries, fractures of their pelvis where they're effectively bleeding to death. It's going to do catastrophic damage. St. George's at 1-7. Going to have to go a hem on helicopter. Rich left a little bit late for work that day. And my phone went. It was a policeman, and he'd said that Rich had been in an accident, and how long would it take me to get to St George's? It wasn't until I was in the car driving to the hospital that it kind of maybe occurred to me that this could be quite serious. Rich has been brought directly to the CT scanner, so doctors can quickly assess his injuries. This is Richard. 
approximately two hours ago by a motorcyclist involved in the collision with a back of a box van. Clipped a car on the slip road of the M25, hit the back of a box van. Injuries top to toes. He's got a right clavicle injury, a right chest wall injury. He has a sensory level of approximately T6. On our arrival, he was GCS 15 and seemed to move only his upper limb. My name is Nevin, one of the orthopaedic doctors. So I'm going to assess you head to toe. So the trachea is central. Nice deep breath, sir. Breath sounds on the right. Chest wall tenderness on the left side. Around a four equal and reactive. I phoned his parents. I felt awful because I couldn't keep it together. Um, his mum was crying. I kept on thinking that I wish I could turn back the clock. taken to hospital by air ambulance following the incident during rush hour. Motorcyclist Ridge is undergoing an emergency CT scan as doctors are concerned about internal injuries and a lack of sensation below the waist. So this patient, he's got T6 sensors. So um, have a look out for anything suspicious. I met Rich at the gym through a mutual friend. I do personal training and sports massage. I saw Rich there and he kind of looked a bit lost and I was like, well, I'm about to teach spin. Why don't you come in and try it for a change? And yeah, he came in. I think he liked it. I think we'd only met like two weeks prior but we literally, we just stood in the gym for a couple of hours one evening just chatting. And yeah, and then after that, we started chatting on Facebook, as you do, uh, messaging each other. He just seemed really nice. OK, Matt, there'll be a voice telling you to breathe in and hold your breath. Just do the best you can, OK? He was like, you know, do you want to go out for dinner? We went to Pizza Express and we were there and we basically got kicked out because we were the only ones there chatting, um, and he came back to mine. I think he left probably about half two, three in the morning. It's that proper like, oh, do I like him? Don't you know? Yeah, I think I like him. Breathe in and hold your breath. He came around the next day, and that's when I think I gave him a sports massage, and obviously just couldn't take my eyes off him. <laughs> His ripped body and tattoos. <laughs> We just kind of kept on seeing each other kind of every day. We'd done a few weeks and had maybe a peck on the cheek like friends. We eventually had a kiss and it was like, I think I pretty much was like, so are you going to kiss me then or what? <laughs> Richard. Hi there, mate. I'm just going to take a blood test here, OK? We'll get you warmed up as well, all right? It's so nice to have someone to do the stuff that I enjoy as, as he does, you know, like being active. It's only now that I realise how much of life that you do take for granted. Doctors need to wait for the full results of Rich's scan to assess if his injuries will be life changing. This is the accident and emergency here. And emergency, oh yes. And if they keep you in, they'll, they'll, they'll move you to a ward. Yeah, I didn't know the legs were that bad in the ward. You yeah, had yeah. to go in the hospital, he said. Yeah. Oh dear, I don't know what caused them. Yeah. They're oh, yeah. off here, don't they? Step in there. <laughs> Is that all right now? Put around that here. Oh dear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Should be all right now. Yeah. 
Anyway, I'll have to be going now. Uh, anyway, I'll have to be going now. I'll have to be going now. I'll tell you soon. Are uh, you well in this country? Yeah, yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, thanks very much. Thank you right. very much indeed. Yeah, man, man just caught my leg, man. I was jumping a wall, in it, and I, and I caught the, the edge. Mad, fam, the cut is deep as well. Yeah, I'm waiting now, I'm at the waiting, um, waiting area to be seen. Yeah, I'm at the a &E. Who take my bloody papers? Thank you very much. Adult trauma call, ETA 10 minutes. Adult male trauma booked into recess six, please. A 36 year old man is being rushed to St George's after being involved in an accident whilst playing football. I was in a supermarket shopping when I got the phone call that Justin had had an accident. I thought she told me that he'd broken his thumb, but because they were driving, I still couldn't really hear what had happened. But I did hear them say Justin was being taken to St George's Hospital. At that point, I realised that it must be something serious. I thought it must be his arm or his leg, dislocated something, broken something. What sort of injury can happen while you're playing football? Hi. Hello. Evening. This is uh, Justin, he's a 36 year old male. At 6.46 this evening, he was playing football, ran backwards into a brick wall. KO for five to ten minutes before to be. On arrival of the first responder, he was a GCS of three, defending up to a GCS of 12. He's combative uh, plus plus on arrival. He has a large, uh, soft wound to the right side of his head. LAC for how long? Five to ten minutes. Five to ten. Yeah. Very small accidents can occur that can have devastating consequences. A simple fall or a trip can cause them to have a severe or potentially lethal brain injury. OK, let's do a primary survey. If a patient's had a loss of consciousness, it implies that the, the injury was severe enough to temporarily shut down the brain. Justin, you're in hospital. Justin. Stay, stay calm. Okay, take a deep breath. Airway's okay, chest is clear. Yeah, chest. He's moving his legs pretty well, so his femur's is like okay. X-ray, basics. Justin, It's not working. Justin, That's with 70 ketamine, isn't it? So it's a bit of an unfair, Justin, an unfair test. Justin, try to stay calm. A patient who sustained a head injury may become very aggressive and quite unlike their normal selves in, in everyday life. It's also an indicator that their brain has, has suffered a degree of injury that's concerning. So, we're going to need some intubating drugs. Yeah. Okay. There's a bit of ketamine, fentanyl ketamine, rock. Doctors need to place Justin in a medically induced coma so they can take urgent scans of his brain. OK, two, please. I was in complete and utter shock. Uh, you just go cold, or you just lose all your sense of feeling. He's my life, right from the day he was born. Justin's my everything. Oh, 
What's your name, sir? I'm booking you in now. Do you want to stay up? By the way, did you see this? Which movie character should you play? Oh, that was fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> What's your called? Hagrid. Um, Hagrid, that's it. Thank you for that. You look nothing like Hagrid. Thank you. I mean, for a start, <laughs> he's got a beard. <laughs> and not just a little bit, like a lot of beard. I know. <laughs> Pain is my friend. Pain is my friend. <laughs> How tall are you, Rich? Six foot. Six foot. Big man. Doctors are awaiting scans of Rich's spine after he lost sensation below his waist in a motorbike accident. Rich. Yeah. Out of ten, what's your pain like? I don't breathe. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's quite high, man, on the chest. I feel like I've been hitting the chest with a sledgehammer. About seven or eight? Nine. Nine. Okay. We started going out in April and he moved in about June. He introduced me to his son quite early on. I've never been that maternal. Being 34 at the time, all my friends had kids. I got thrown into motherhood with, a, with like a three and a half year old. And Caden was great, he's such a sweet kid. And we always got on. You know, I never tried to, you know, even as we got further on in the relationship, I never I never tried to be his mum or anything like that. I was always really conscious how hard it must be for a mum to to let their kid hang out with, you know, their ex and their new partner. He is like a mini rich. He basically loves gaming, he likes cars, he likes motorbikes. They are very close. Sorry, Rich, I'm gonna have to uncover you just for a sec, okay? Attach a few more cables to you. Rich's mum and dad separated when he was born, and so his mum and his grandparents brought him up. They didn't want to leave Caden like he felt like his dad left him. So I think that's always pushed him to be a better father. When you see him with Caden, like messing around and playing, yeah, they're yeah, they're they're really sweet. What's your partner's name? Is it wife, girlfriend? I don't know. Anna, wife, girlfriend? Girlfriend. Girlfriend. And is she the mother of your child as well? No, but we've got one on the way. You've got one? Oh, right. How far along? September. I remember finding out that I was pregnant and being completely shocked. And actually, Rich seemed more excited than I did. I never knew if I wanted a kid anyway myself. I spent my 20s trying not to get my pregnant and my 30s debating whether or not to have a baby. So it's only now that I'm nearly 40 that it was like, um, yeah, actually, I would quite like a baby. That's not too far away. You looking forward to it? Not like this. Doctors now have the preliminary results of Rich's CT scan. Richard, so looking at your scans, You've got a couple of rib fractures around here, and your breastbone's got a fracture through it. Probably the most significant injury is the one on your back. At the moment, it looks like there's a fracture on one of your spine uh, vertebrae on the back, near your sort of chest level. Now, the doctors who saw you first just said that you weren't feeling very much around sort of tummy chest area. I'd just like to re-examine you again, just to see if that's changing. When someone comes in with spinal trauma, we reassess the patient to see what their true level of function in their legs are, to see whether they've got any sensation, to see whether there's any movement in any part of the leg. I'm going to start with your head, OK? Can you feel me touching your hair? Yeah. Can you feel that? Yeah. And is it the same? Yeah. On both sides? The same? Less. Less. I, I've just touched you. Could you feel anything? No. no. 
to, when I touch you, just say yes. And the feet. Richard, I'm, I'm, I'm touching you around your knee area. No. Nothing. Can you move your feet for me? OK. A reflexic flaccid paralysis with a definite T6 sensory level. Flaccid paralysis is when your legs stop working and they start working in a way that they become wobbly rather than stiff. First thing that runs to my mind is spinal shock. The spinal cord has taken a big injury and it's decided to shut down and stop working. Rich's girlfriend, Hannah, has arrived at the hospital. Football fell backwards, smacked his head on the wall. So he's going to have a scan and then. Five to ten minute LAC, so yeah. fairly significant. Equal reactive pupils, a bit of roving eye movements, so, though, and right. bradycardic at sort of 39. Yeah, I saw that. 36 year old Justin needs an urgent brain scan after he lost consciousness, falling backwards into a wall during a game of football. Justin was born in Bahrain, in the Arabian Gulf. I went to Bahrain with my husband when I was 21, and we lived there for 14 years. I was 24 when I was pregnant, which seems young now, but it was quite old in those days. Things were very hard to get hold of. But we used to go into the souk and, and rummage around. We couldn't find uh, maternity clothes when we were there, so whenever any of my friends came to England, they used to go and we used to write a shopping list of, of clothes. Justin had a traumatic beginning coming into this world. He was born prematurely at 32 weeks, and he spent the first um, five weeks of his life in a, an incubator in hospital. The hospitals were quite primitive compared to this country, I would say. And he was taken to the um, local hospital as they were the only place that had the incubators. He, it was touch and go then for him. I wasn't allowed to go and see him. I could see him through a window, but they were worried about infection. So I used to just look in and see this baby and think that he was mine. It was a Friday morning, and my husband and I were lying in bed. The phone rang. It was the hospital. They said, um, Mrs Davies? And I said, yes. And Mrs Davies, your, your baby's ready for collection. I was so excited. I was so excited. And I picked up the baby, <laughs> and he didn't stop crying. <laughs> he was just wonderful. He, he was such a beautiful baby. extradural haematoma, which is a collection of blood between the skull and the brain itself. If that collection is actively bleeding, it can push the brain on the right side across over onto the left side. Okay. It implies a very significant injury. Something stuck in my arm. What is it? It's a small bicycle. Okay. 
Okay. Inside there. Okay, I'll just need... Have you never had a small bicycle stuck in your arm? You haven't lived. Do you drink diet stuff normally? Diet. Diet cola. Diet is... No, look. Diet cola link to dementia and strokes. What is dementia? Dementia. ¿Qué te hace loco? Dementia is when you lose your marbles. Yeah. What? Michael. Michael. Oh, yes. Ah, uh, it's what you. Is that? What's that you're looking for? The standard. Oh, oh the, the newspaper. He brought it to me, my friend. It might be in the toilet. Wait, Do you want to have a look? Oh, that's the girl's toilet. Michael? Hey? That's the girl's toilet. Oh, sorry, Gordon. <laughs> this is my sight are all Jesus. <laughs> Which one? Let's uh, see, is there a pit? That's paper yeah. in there. Not in there. Not in there. It's not in there. Oh, well. You see what I can do about finding you a standard. Yeah. Any consultant's asked me to have a word with you about a patient who's come in uh, on his bike, slid and hit the back of a, a box lorry. Was, on the scene, he was noted not to be moving his legs. Neurosurgeons are assessing whether the fractures in Bridge's spine have caused permanent damage to the nerves in his lower body. They, they've got to do um, tests. He's kind of fractured his um, sternum, so they, they've got to monitor that. So they've got a cardiologist checking his heart, making sure everything's working OK. Um, he's fractured a, a load of ribs, and he's uh, got um, a fracture to his spine at the top, so at the moment he can't feel anything below his chest. Rich is a bit of a late starter in life with his career. When we met, he was floor laying. It was never what he wanted to do. He's always been quite creative. An opportunity sort of came about where my friends run the prosthetics for Game of Thrones. He did a week's work experience there, wanted to try and pursue it somehow, so he sold the car, the love of his life, went to Manchester and did this six-week course in uh, prosthetics. I was pretty much supporting us. Financially, it was really tight. Like, at our ages, you know, you'll think, what are we doing? But at the same time, you've got to be happy. We're going to have to try and protect your spinal cord, because it looks like that it's taking a little bit of an insult, and that's why you're having difficulty feeling on the lower half of your body. Yeah. He eventually got a job at Shepperton Studios, working in the moulding and sculpting area. He was thrown in at the deep end, but he kind of thrived on it. The hours were long, the commuting was horrible, but he just absolutely loved it. It kind of made people aware of what he was capable of. Doctors now have the final results of Rich's CT scan. I 
like they said, the spine's just in shock. That's not the priority, okay? It'll be all right. Okay. It's just a little glitter. Rich will be taken to a specialist ward, where doctors will continue to monitor the level of sensation in his legs. I'm going to say George's and tooting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's just been moved up to Nero. Sorry, I'm a bit emotional. <laughs> I might take my jumper off, I'm really hot. I feel like I'm flushing up as well. Flush, flushing up? Is that an expression, flushing up? Can you flush up? Flash or flush? Flush, can flush. you flush up? No, see, my mother would say, um, no, you just flush. You just flush, okay, you don't flush up. I feel good now. You feel better? All bandaged up. I'm glad. Yeah. So we'll see you on Monday. <laughs> well, this way, all right. Bye-bye. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Justin's head scan has revealed two active bleeds on his brain. So extra dural, actively bleeding midline shift needs to go to neurosurgery now. Neurosurgeons must act promptly to relieve the pressure on his skull. So it needs to be done quickly. Neurosurgeon priority. Yes. Um, so neurosurgeons are coming down. Coming down. Yeah. A patient with an extradural heat hematoma needs to get to theatre very, very quickly to give them the best chances of returning to a normal life as opposed to, to becoming brain dead. If we could ring that bleep and say the patient's been accepted by neuroITU. Justin's mum, Sue, and wife, Preem, have arrived at the hospital as he's being prepared for theatre. When we came back to England in um, 1990, my husband um, got a job in um, Thailand. It wasn't the right place for the children at the time. So that's when um, their dad and I separated. I used to feel as if I was mum and dad. I didn't want them to be mummy's boys. So we used to have adventure holidays. Go to the Lake District and climb mountains. I used to think um, we've got to toughen them up and <laughs> make men of them. We had a lovely holiday once. We um, packed our bags and they had to carry everything on their backs, on their bikes. We cycled to the railway station and we went to the Isle of Wight with our tent. And we spent the week cycling around the island and camping. At the time, they were saying to me, why can't we have proper holidays like everybody else? And they now look back and say it was the best holiday ever. <laughs> he had a few girlfriends, but he never found the right girl until he met Preem in Thailand, um, fell head over heels with her. Preem initially came over to England for a short holiday. It was a total culture shock for her when she came. He was very proud of her. He'd say, I love her so much, Mum but because of the complications of uh, marrying someone from a different country. He was unsure about marrying her, but I did tell him, I, I said, you know, um, you've just got to think, will you ever find anyone that you will love as much as Preem? And he said, no, I won't. And I said, well, that tells you that you must marry her. Hi. 
in one of the consultants here. Just did some up there. Yeah. This is pretty... So um, he was playing football and has somehow ended up running backwards into a wall and has hit his head quite hard. Now, the scans show a couple of bleeds on his brain. So the neurosurgeons are coming down to see him and then they will decide on exactly the type of surgery oh, they think that needs to be done. No, this is a big shock. When I th heard he'd had a, an injury through playing football, you think it's going to be a minor concussion. You don't yeah. realise it's going to be a big bleed like that. Yeah. Yeah. This is quite a serious injury. Best case scenario is that they drain it uh. and that it recovers completely. Uh. Worst case scenario is that the swelling is becomes very, very big. Mm, mm, brain damage. And possibly worst case is that he could die from it. You don't realise that um, your children will always be with you um, and you're always supporting them. You think they're going to make their own way, but they always come back to their parents. You don't think football's so dangerous, do you? It's an unusual injury to get from football. Normal brain is this kind of grey colour. As you can see on this side, there's a large area of yeah. this colour white, which is blood. Oh, my so there's qu a quite a bit, lot of blood there, which I suspect they'll want to drain out. If you release the collection of blood quickly, then the midline shift will normally resolve and you could have a complete recovery but you're never really sure till further down the line. Hello, James, it's Mum. Yeah. Um, it's not good. It's not good? No. Um, the scans come back. Yeah. He's got two bleeds on his brain. So the neurosurgeon is coming down. Um, we think they're going to have to, to operate. So I want to make sure the theatres are all set to go. We will. We'll get him up to Could you bring him up to theatre one? Jack, it's the morning room, second yeah. floor. Yeah. Got it. Neurosurgeons have arrived to take Justin for emergency surgery. They need to stem the bleeding in his brain as quickly as possible to give him the best chance of survival. I'm sorry if I come across quite brisk or curt during this conversation, but mm. Justin's got a bleed on the surface of his brain. Mm. Um, and it looks like it's getting bigger. Oh, no, it um, is. Uh, and we can treat these bleeds, uh, but they need to be taken to, for surgery immediately. Of course. Um, mm. So that's why I'm, I'm sort of no, rushing us through this. And I hope that we're going to be able to give him a complete recovery. But There's always really a risk. To... I, I do understand. He's going to have the side of his head shaved like no. that and we'll drain the blood and find the cause of the blood, the blood vessel at first, mm. and stop it bleeding. Thank okay. you very much. No problem at all. They deal with this sort of thing. Mm. For them, it's, it's the, what they do every day. Stop bleeding. Yeah. It's very important when the outcome may be bad to be completely honest with the family and to make sure they have realistic expectations of what might happen if, if things don't go well. It always amazes me how relatives and patients can handle some extremely bad news that we sometimes have to give them. This has come completely out of the blue, so Seeing people being able to, to cope with that with great bravery is, is always very special to see. Every day at work we see terrible things happening to, to people of all walks of life. So seeing that so regularly just makes me feel that you, 
you've got to really try and get the best out of your life. We're all given a limited period of time on Earth, so it's really to make the, the best of every day and enjoy your time here. Um, we're just getting him ready. He needs to go to theatre. Yes, he's going straight up. The yes, almost the second you have had your chat with him, he is leaving. It was a, an absolutely terrifying time for everybody. We just feared that he would be nothing when he came round. I just remember him opening his eyes in total bewilderment and closing them again. I remember saying, Justin, it's all right. Your mum is here. You've got nothing to worry about. You must just lie there and you're going to recover. We didn't know what sort of son I was going to have. Hello, darling. How are you? Just now, no, how are you? It's the main thing. You're very chatty today. That is. No, you are. You're very happy. How's Preen doing? How are you, Douglas? I'll be here. <laughs> what are you doing? She did a silly dance. Hello. <laughs> London, really yeah. London. Right in the middle of London. The future is unknown for Justin. He won't be the same. The brain never heals itself. It does rewire, and it's rewiring itself very well. It has been a challenge, but that's what I expect of myself. And um, I hope that I've, um, I hope I've been a good mum. I'm not the biggest bearer of knowledge on life as a whole, but the accident's almost a bit of a reality check about the value of life. And I don't know, having a brain industry, it, it can weaken you as a person. I just want to go back to the same old strong Justin. It's gonna take some time, but sooner rather than later, I hope that I can remember the accident I can grow as a person off the back of it. But I'd like to believe that I can go back to my old ways, shall we say. He kept on thinking that if we just believe and keep wishing hard enough, like maybe he'll, you know, be able to wiggle his toes. Maybe he'll get sensation back. Um, might take a while, but maybe it will. I can't remember if it was the Friday or the Saturday. It was the doctor that sort of said, uh, you know, we asked the prognosis of him walking and he was like, there's a 20% chance that he could walk. But, you know, um, never say never, but it's not looking good, basically. Rich gave me the option to walk away when it happened. I didn't even cross my mind to walk away, really, because, you know, when you love someone... As soon as I'd woken up after being knocked out, 
I knew straight away, I remember touching my stomach and it just felt like dead skin. And then I, from that point, I knew what was going on. So it's, it's, diff it's a difficult thing to um, come terms with. When you're put in a position like this, you don't really kind of expect people to hang around. I mean, you lose so much, you just kind of expect to lose everything else. Thankful that uh, Kira came out healthy. Thankful I made it home in time to see Kira come out healthy. Um, it was just nice to have the girls back home, really, because, um, yeah, they mean everything. They're uh, the only thing that keep me sane most of the time. I think left to my own devices, I'd be a lunatic. <laughs> I'm hoping my disability doesn't impact my daughter too much hoping it's not going to be too hard um, with a little one that's trying to run around everywhere um, with me not being able to chase them upstairs. <laughs> People from the pub smashed the window and pulled him out and then the car just blew up. Adult male trauma calls in five minutes. He was the driver of a vehicle that had impacted against a wall at high speed. Do not move your neck. Actually, don't move any part of your body right now. You're talking about a vehicle that was traveling at high speeds and then came to a stop all of a sudden. Just because the car around you stopped doesn't mean the body is going to stop. 